sexyhackers.com. Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Welcome, everyone. Today, we will be discussing My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews. Uh, there is a lot to unpack in this. So, <laughs> so I, much. All right. Well, I am super excited to dive into this book. So, Mandy's going to be taking us through our, our first section of the plot. Mm-hmm. There is, again a lot to unpack in this book. So we're going to work through it chunk by chunk Mm -hmm. um, to make sure we don't get lost along the way. And it is Um, easy to get lost. It is. is. (laughs) There's so much. Uh, And before we dive into that, I just want to take a second to thank uh, sexyhackers.com for this awesome space um, and providing us with this amazing studio here today that we can record this podcast and supporting our uh, silly want of wanting to relive these things from our sin <laughs> reason. Or live them reason. for the first time. Yeah, live them. I think most of us are living them for the first time for with this ones. book. Yeah, so bringing up yeah. bringing up Mandy's childhood pain and oh. bringing it all into <laughs> our lives. That's, that's, that's exciting. <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's dive on into the first section of the plot mm-hmm. of My Sweet Audrina. Sure, and uh, just before I start, um, would you like to help me with the content? Warning here, Sarah. Yes, <laughs> let's have a content warning because this book is a wild ride. Oh. Um, so My Sweet Audrina deals with a lot of themes about manipulation and abuse, um, physical, psychological, sexual abuse. Um, it is, like we said before, not a happy book. So um, definitely... There's some heavy themes that we're going to be diving into. So, Thank you, Sarah. Forewarning. You're much more eloquent than I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crazy shit Sarah's happens. our resident grown-up, mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which came about when I, um, the first time I thought about your job, I was like, oh, everybody, I was thinking about this today of like everyone's, like everyone here has pretty grown-up jobs, but I was like, Sarah works for the city. Mm-hmm. Like, no official <laughs> title that I know of. I'm sure you have one. I just don't it's know secret. it. Yeah, yeah, but it's I, like... I do have an official title. <laughs> but it's it's so formal sounding. Work yes. for the city. I'm a civil servant. Yeah. <laughs> she always lets me know what bridges are out. Yes, I do. I'm, I'm always, I always keep everyone updated on, like, where is there a big paving project to avoid? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's dive on in. Okay. So... My sweet Audrina, I would say they never give an explicit time period, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark and and say the 60s. I did read it 60s, 70s. Okay. Yeah, and then the the move the lifetime movie. It looked like they were like firmly early seventies. They have the no idea, has no <laughs> timeline at all. All over okay. the place. We're gonna we'll have some opinions that. about that later. When we get to that. <laughs> I watched fifteen minutes of it, so, um, so I've seen it twice. <laughs> this is done um, in first person. Um, Audrina, I would say, is a, fits the trope of the unreliable narrator Just to, to the extreme. <laughs> um, I blame her dad. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they live in a gingerbread Victorian in Virginia, I believe, and it's her, her father, her mother, her aunt, and her cousin Vera, and Vera is presented to the world as Audrina's sister because the aunt had her out of wedlock and they want to shield her from the shame. More That's on that later because I'm also putting in cousin in <laughs> quotation marks heavily in they're quotes. all about the shame they are um audrina has a hard time with concepts of t- the passage of time um with her memory and you find out it's because one her parents do not keep newspapers anywhere near her. There are a lot of clocks in the house, and they're all set at different times. And no one talks about their age, but for all intents and purposes, she is seven. Now, she is not the first Audrina. She actually shares her name with her sister, who died nine years before, mysteriously, in the woods, after, and I quote, some boys spoiled her in some indescribable way. Yuck. 
Mm-hmm. Yuck. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So here, <laughs> and um, according to her father, uh, Damien, this daughter was the bee's knees, so special. She made everyone feel like they were the greatest person on earth. Made and him feel like he was the Made him feel like he was the greatest person on <laughs> earth. As I believe her mother or her aunt clears up that the only gift the first Audrina had was completely taking everything Damien said at face value. Anyway, he wants his daughter, the second and worst Audrina, (laughs) to catch the gifts. And catching the gifts involves being brought into her dead sister's room, which is kept like a mausoleum. And there's a rocking chair, and she's made to sit in the rocking chair alone and try to get the memories. But every time Audrina's in this rocking chair, she gets um, flashes to the day that her sister died um, in that very, very, very traumatic way. And she doesn't understand why. To the reader, it becomes very clear why. But she doesn't understand, and it's kind of a frustrating read. Because I think you, it, yeah. everyone yeah. figures it out way yeah, before Yeah, Audrina she does. doesn't grasp things at all, ever. Mm-hmm. Um at she's all. not very smart. Yeah. She's, no, which is not her fault, poor poor Adrena. But yeah. uh, it's it is definitely it's a little rough to read. Of like, come on, girlfriend, get right. it, get uh, it. Mm-hmm. In addition to you know being consistently confused about time by her parents, they also are sheltering her from anyone outside the home. Oh, yeah, she, she doesn't, doesn't go, go to, to school. school. She's not allowed to go to town, um, so her her home is truly in in White Fern, and that's it. Very mm-hmm. sheltered. Yeah, where literally everyone treats her like garbage all of the time. Yeah, <laughs> and um, her sister, cousin sister, Vera, <laughs> sister sister slash cousin sister slash cousin slash sister, um, <laughs> Vera is allowed to go to school. Damien has the only car, so she's left with what I assume is. Um, a pretty shady education with her mother and her aunt. Yeah. And I mean, her mother was a pianist. Was her mm-hmm. aunt? Her aunt was a teacher. Her though. aunt was a teacher, but she got fired um, for smacking kids around too much. And considering mm-hmm. this is like the time period, like she must have been really been. She yeah. Must have been. yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, the bar like, was low. Corporal was punishment low. was still like acceptable in school. So if she was doing so much that she got kicked out, like. She must have been doing bicycle kicks. Oh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> and as our two educators at the table prep for back to school season. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Don't Get bicycle my rulers kick ready. your kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So she has like kind of a spotty education. One of the finer points of her education is they want her to learn social graces the way that her aunt and her mother teach her social graces (laughs) (laughs) you guys are waiting for this part tea time Um, is amazing it's my favorite thing ever they have tuesday tea times with aunt mercy marie aunt mercy marie is not a visitor um she is a portrait on the fireplace of um Elsbeth and Lucky's um, dead and or missing aunt. Lucky is the mom. Lucky is the yes. mom. Elsbeth is the aunt. Um, and so what they do at tea time, <laughs> which is mandatory for Audrina to attend, is um, they drink a lot of tea. And that tea is um, just, just just a little... A little 80 proof. Um, (laughs) You know. They spike it with some bourbon, and they talk. They um, take turns um, talking through Aunt Mercy Marie. And as they get drunker, the things that Mercy Marie says gets like... I would say it messed up. Would you say it's it's pretty I would say they insult each other. Yeah. 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 I kind of want to have this time with a few people. Oh, I (laughs) have instituted tea time in my house. Yeah. (laughs) I got a picture we can use. (laughs) Is it just you and Foster? It's just me and Foster, so I really do most of the talking. Um, My dog just lovingly looks up at me as I pretend to be a portrait. But, you know, (laughs) whoever works. So everyone's got their own version of being. Passive aggressive in their household. This is just their this version. This is their way. And I would <laughs> wow. say, instead of leaving notes on the fridge. Yeah. 
and like I would say, like it would it would be like a healthy way for them if they weren't dragging a seven year old girl into it and forcing her yeah. to sit down as they drag out their um, messy romantic pasts with I did, one another. Um, I loved the most succinct and like accurate thing that Audrina says. I think in the entire book is when she. Um, gets everybody all riled up during tea time and, like, kind of ruins it. And her, her just her reaction is like, well, I guess I'm not fit for social situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no no kidding, kidding. Audrina. Like, no kidding. Hashtag it me. Yeah. <laughs> and what exactly is the, the point of getting her prepared for social graces if they're not ever going to let her leave the house? Right? Yes. What, what was this training for? But... Um, I think it's like because eventually because it said um, Damien likes to have like a lot of parties because it makes him feel very important and very good about himself and like eventually maybe when she's old enough they're going to trot her out for these parties okay. and, and her magic um, hair with her her magic um, that's right. chameleon prism hair which is like, dirty blonde and yeah it, it's it's, it's like uh, white brown red some black I think. Just describing dirty blonde. It's just it's okay. It's like okay. that's not magical. No. It's pretty standard. Girl's got highlights, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and Vera's apricot hair. Yes. That's a little bit magic. Yes, her but sister. Not yeah, there's definitely magic more magic than Audrina's. Hint. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, apricot hair and very pale face, which just sounds like a lot of look. But yeah. hey, whatever works. She's a super ginger, like let's not <laughs> I can get behind a ginger, it's fine. <laughs> but Vera, <laughs> okay, she has her reasons. I I am gonna um, defend a few things about Vera. Oh, I'm absolutely. gonna defend a few things about Vera because um, there's a few things that are very defensible about Vera. There's one huge thing that really isn't. Is it murder? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> even that, like, eh, um, <laughs> even that's not so bad. No, she had her reasons. Okay, if it was her at all, allegedly. Mm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I lost track. This is tea, time. Tea, tea time. Tea time. So that's it's, it's it's a very confusing time. For Audrina, and you you find out that also part of like their long con on her with the time is they hold they say it's Tuesday, but they hold it like sometimes twice a week, yeah, just to like mess with her mm -hmm. um, her sense, sense of, of time. time, which they also do to the audience. Like we are being gaslit along with this poor girl because yeah. time makes no sense in this book. It's like one sentence, it's this time, and then two months pass, and then a year passes. And then, and then she's 21. And, and then yes. the next day, it's Christmas. Yeah. And then the next day, yeah. It's absurd. It's absurd. <laughs> Thanks, VC. Yeah. Thanks, VC. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you think that VC Andrews, like, because she, I assume, probably had to, like, stay indoors a lot of the time, and, like, it sounds like she didn't have a great relationship with her mom. Do you think that, like, she was projecting some of her, like, anger oh, about not... Yeah. Not Absolutely. being able to engage with like the passage of time in a normal way. 100%. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, and then around tea time, isn't that when we go from like she's seven and then suddenly she's yes. nine? She's seven, and then in the course of like Is two she? paragraphs, a paragraph, she's yeah. nine, and it's her birthday, and it's going, it's yeah, and she knows what day her birthday is suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> Her birthday is September 9th, which is mysteriously the same day as her, the first Audrina's birthday. Dun -dun. And Dun -dun. also the same day that the first Audrina died. What? Dun -dun -dun. what? All of this is a coincidence, clearly. <laughs> which um, you miss uh, a lot of those details if you're just listening to this on Audible, like on your train rides back and forth um, to work, and you kind of miss some parts. So, no, it, it was not obvious to uh, all of us at this <laughs> end of the table. Um, Speak for yourself, because it, <laughs> it was just sort of happening in the background, and then, I, you know, they would say things. There's some weird shit that comes out of this author's mouth. Um, so it was some? Just, some. Um, <laughs> so it's just playing in my ears while I'm, like, commuting to work and, like, looking up and blushing, like, I'm sorry. 
imagine listening to these things around <laughs> you and embarrassed when my coworkers are like, what are you listening to? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Just like, Go away. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, no, I did not pick up on it right away. It took me a good halfway through the book. Well, and it's disorienting, too, because there's so much description of how bonkers their house is. Mm -hmm. Um, which was one of the first things that struck me is like, especially like over the course of tea time, it's like in one of their parlors and it's like, how do you have several? Um, but it did make me learn so very much about Mandy as a human being because we bonded over our love of Southern Gothic. Mm -hmm. And I started this book and was like, oh, yep. Okay. mm -hmm, It all makes sense now. (laughs) It is peak Southern Gothic. This is <laughs> I peak think Southern Gothic. The fact that we are so confused says a lot about her writing. It's first person. She wants you to be as confused as Audrina is. And oh, you yeah. are as confused and you as are. Yeah. she is. So I appreciate that, I yeah. guess, as mm-hmm. frustrating as it was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so I want to make sure that we get to the end of our plot description yes. here before we dive into really our, our views and how this has colored our views. Sure. Yes. But... I want to make sure we hit a couple of points so our, our audience, who maybe hasn't read this gem, uh, can, can really understand along with us. Okay. Yes. Barreling along here now. Um, so tea time, and then um, you find, along the way, you find out they have a neighbor. His name is Arden Lowe. Um, Vera claims that he is um, very, very much in love with her. Oh, yeah, he sucks. He, <laughs> I'm saying it now. I'm saying it early. Arden sucks. Okay. And um, Audrina goes into the woods to meet him and mm-hmm. take some time to to admire his twelve uh, year old physique as he works in the garden. She is well, either seven or nine at this point. Yeah. Somewhere. Which kind clear, of made me feel like she was like reading the book the first time. I was like, that doesn't sound like a nine year old. To be clear, she is forbidden from going into the woods. Oh, yes. She is breaking the law of the house. (laughs) So she makes friends with um, Arden, and then you find out um, that her mother is pregnant. What? With a baby she should not be having, because you later find out she has a heart condition, which explains at the beginning of the book they say she only likes to cook. And read books on the Shea Lounge. And relate. Um, yeah. But. Um, I have a heart condition too. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me lay on a couch totally. and do nothing all day and just read. I've had a heart condition all summer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, there, Damien's very excited. Him, He's about the only one who's super excited about this baby. Because um, he doesn't care about his wife's health. He doesn't care about his wife's health. And he says, and I quote, God owes us a boy this time. Woof. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Lucky, conti- Lucky and Elizabeth continue with Tuesday Tea Times. She does not really cut the booze out of uh, the tea. And then... Um, we get to a point where Damien wants to have this gigantic party. And he think he's doing this because he thinks it'll cheer Lucky up because she's very depressed and tired and sick. So he says, his idea is like, I know it will cheer you up. Throw this big party. You make all the food. You have to be on all night. Play piano. But not too well. But not too well. Because then I'll feel bad that I made you quit your career to come live with me in my insane mansion. And every time we have these... It was these, her mansion, though. Yeah, it is. True. It's her yeah. mansion, her and her sisters. Um, and knowing full well that after this party, I will find something to pick at, and we're going to have a big old fight. I hope this cheers you up, honey. <laughs> that described my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to comment. I was like... So, <laughs> been there. <laughs> so, been there, divorced that. Things uh, don't go well, that. I'm guessing. <laughs> things go disastrously wrong. Uh, Lucky wears the wrong type of dress. How oh, dare she? It's described as a cowl neckline red dress. Oh, yeah. Um, Sounds cute. And so, like, a lot of the people who are watching her play piano spectacularly are mostly kind of like, You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm, like, looking at (laughs) pretend boobs. Um, And she does, like, raise the roof with her piano skills because she's amazing. Um, 
and there is a big fight at the end that um, Audrina witnesses um, to the point where uh, Damien takes his belt to Lucky and screams the great, great, great line, your nipples could be seen. Yes. And Passive voice. Um, Passive voice. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then after they see that Audrina um, is like watching this, they become very apologetic. Lucky says that Damien has never hurt me in physical ways, which is a lot to unpack, even if it does seem to be kind of BS. Um, and then you find out F that um, Lucky went into labor at six months after the party. Um, there was a girl born named Sylvia, and she's going to still be at the hospital for a while. And uh, unfortunately for Audrina, Lucky is dead. Oh. And then we get the great scene of... Uh, Vera crawling into her bed to tell her what is going down with her mom's body oh, in the yeah. morgue, oh. which is super cool of her to do to yes. her brainwashed to her. young sister cousin. Oh, yikes. Yes. Yikes. I don't remember that. And, and the, well, she basically implies that they're going to, like, the autopsy thing and how they're going to be putting um, cotton up her mom's vagina. Cool. It's, it's awesome. I feel really like Vera's cool. uninformed. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's not really a thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know if that's really a thing. I. So Nobody like, tell us if that's a thing. Yeah, don't tell us. We don't want to know. We don't want to know. No, I don't. No, thank you. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, with that delightful bit of emotional nonsense dumped on Audrina, we're actually going to have to wrap up this week's episode and come on oh back God. next week um, for some more exciting moments um we'll be diving in next week to talk really more about um we'll finish up of course the plot of the book but then dive into some of our favorite what the fuck moments mm. of yeah. which there are many so, <laughs> so many. many really exciting <laughs> so many um so we hope that you join us here next week week on who let me read this thank you again to sexyhackers.com for this thank amazing you. space and these pretty awesome t-shirts yes. uh i've been reading this one or i've been uh, showing out this one read a book to everybody um a lot given the judgy face to folks <laughs> who just watch tv you're good at that face it's, it's yeah. my it's just kind <laughs> it's of just my your face. face so um thank you guys so much thank you to uh michelle white Sarah Wallish, Mandy Veter, and Andrea Dreidel Schrader. Oh, yes. so close. <laughs> so close. Dreidel Schrader. Dreidel like Dreidel, but not right. Dreidel. The worst. I'll take it. And Fair thank enough. you to our lovely host, Laura Holterman. Thank you, Laura. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. 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 SexyHackers.com. Stream Team!